today we're going to look at algebraic equations. Now you might have already done some work on equations, but what I'm wanting to do is go right back to the beginning. So let's not head into all the fancy rules or whatever you might know. Let's just start with trying to make sure we really understand the language of algebra and what it's saying to us. So what I want us to look at is translating an algebraic e equation back into English, into words. So what I've got here is the equation 5x is equal to 15. What does that say to us? Well, the first thing we need to immediately know is that when we write 5x, algebra shorthand, it's just shorthand for 5 times x, right? You know that by now, that when you just put 5 next to the x, in algebra, you leave out the time sign. So what 5x means is 5 times x. So what this says to us, what does this equation say to us? It says 5 times something gives me 15. 5 times something gives me 15. Putting it into nice language, what this says is when I multiply the number by 5, I get 15. And when I put it that way, it's quite easy for me to figure out what the number, that mystery number that x is standing in place of, is. The answer there is obviously going to be 3, because it's 3 that when I multiply by 5, I get 15. OK, try this one for yourself. Um, try and write down in your homework books what the equation 3x plus 1 equals 10 means or would stand for in English. Pause the video now and try it. Okay, so what you should have got is this idea. If you take your mystery number, the number x, and you multiply it by 3 and then add 1, you'll get the answer, 10. Remember, order of operations, your bed mass, bod mass, whatever you want to call it, applies equally well when you're doing equations and algebra. So what you've got here is x multiplied by 3 plus 1. And so multiplication has to come first. So it's take the number, multiply it by 3, then add 1, and you'll get the answer of 10. And so what we're talking about is if I multiply a number by 3 and then add 1, I get 10. That's the translation. And hopefully you can see quite easily that that mystery number that you're talking about will be 3. Because 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. We're going to talk today a little bit about what it means for something to be a solution of the equation. So if we ask a question like this one, is x equal to 2 a solution of this equation here? Well, obviously, one of the things we could try and do is we could try and take this x squared plus 1 equals 2x plus 3 and solve the equation and see if we get out the answer of 2. But um, I'm sure at the moment you'll realize you don't know how to solve that kind of equation at all. And in fact, we can do it a bit more sensibly just by thinking about what does it mean for something to be the solution of an equation? Well, to be a solution of an equation, it means that this value here must make this equation true. In other words, this value here must make this bit, the left-hand side, be exactly equal to the right-hand side. So if we put x equal to 2 into here, we must get exactly the same answer as if we put x equal to 2 into here. So let's try that now. Let's just separate it out easily. We're going to use LHS to stand for left-hand side. So if we look at the left-hand side of the equation when x is equal to 2, what we'll get is 2 cubed plus 1. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, so it's 8. 8 plus 1 gives me 9. What about our right-hand side of the equation? Well, that'll be 2 multiplied by 2 plus 3. 
So when x is equal to 2, the right-hand side of our equation is 4 plus 3, which is 7. Now we can answer our question. Is x equal to 2 a solution of the equation? Well, when we put it in, we get this being 9 and this being 7. So they're not equal. So x is equal to 2 is not a solution of this particular equation because it doesn't make this equation too true. It doesn't make this equal to this. Okay, you try this one for yourself now. Open your homework books and decide whether x equal to negative 1 is a solution of the equation x squared minus x equals 2, 2. Pause and do it now. All right, so when you had a look at this, you should have said the left-hand side will be equal to put in negative 1. So we'll get negative 1 squared minus negative 1. And that'll give me 1. If I subtract a negative, it's the same as adding. And so I'll get the answer of 2. And that 2 is what the right-hand side is equal to. So when I put in x is equal to minus 1, I get 2 here. And that is exactly equal to what it should be. And so this thing here is a solution because it makes that equation true. It makes the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. Just a few little words and vocabulary words that might be important to know because people talk about these things in different ways. So we answered the question now, is x equal to negative 1 a solution of that equation? And we checked it out and we went and we saw that when we put in the negative 1 here, we did in fact get 2. So in fact, negative 1 does make this equation true. It does make this equal to this. So there are a couple of ways we can then talk about that. We talk about it as a solution of the equation. We also can say the following. We can say that x equals to minus 1 satisfies the equation. Just another way of saying that, it satisfies the equation. In other words, it makes the equation true. And the reason? Well, sometimes people talk about it like this. Because when we evaluate this thing, x squared minus x, when x equal to minus 1, we get 2. This is just a fancy way of saying when we find out the value of x squared minus x, when x is minus 1, we'll get a 2. In other words, we put x is minus 1 into this thing here, we get our 2. Fancy way of saying that is we evaluate x squared minus x when x is minus 1. And another way we often talk about doing that exact thing is to say we substitute x is minus 1 into the um, expression x squared minus x, and we get out 2. So substitute is another word we use there. Substitute means put minus 1 in place of x. Okay, so that's just some words we'll use so that you're familiar with them. Solution, same as talking about the thing satisfying the equation. Evaluating an expression, it's the same as substituting a value into the expression.